Hey everyone, Max at the microphone again and today's video will be split it into two parts. There were so many important and complicated things related to the transition of CSGO to Source 2 and future Valve games that I didn't have enough time to process and structure all of the information. It'll take a little longer than I originally planned and the next video will be uploaded soon, so let's get right into it. I know you already tired of hearing about Source 2, but it would be kind of weird for me to just stop covering this topic. Especially considering the fact that almost all community hype was based on my or my friends' findings. Whether CSGO developers release a new engine soon or not isn't that important. The more important thing is that the news and leaks continue to constantly appear, so the development isn't frozen and continues at a needed pace. For example, two weeks ago in a CSGO beta branch for the developers we noticed an account playing on a map called DE Sibabubble or Cobblestone with a postfix S2. As we have already found out in previous videos that S2 postfix probably means the Source 2 version of the map. However, for the first time a round score appeared next to the map on the new engine. And this probably means that they finally started testing some actual game mechanics and not just map appearance. Judging by the fact that the score stopped at 1-0, we can assume that the developer tested some simple type of mechanic like setting a plant and then went on to do some more mapping related stuff. This person wasn't a part of the CSGO development team and previously took an active part in creating locations for the Half-Life Alex. In total, over the past 5 months developers leaked 7 of these maps. And each of these maps is tied to a different level designer and Valve developer. Because of that I have a suspicion that they just distributed every possible map to different people within the team and are porting them to Source 2 in parallel, in order to meet some deadlines and not just make it one by one. Scope.gg analyze your game on Face It and Matchmaking to become the best player possible. Recently they've added a new feature called Pre-Match. It helps to analyze your opponent's behavior even before the game starts. Just paste your Face It lobby link and check if your opponents usually play aggressive or defensive. Learn their favorite positions, weapons and overall summary of the team and to be ready for the start of the match keep your eye on the warm-up timer. Learn how to predict enemy's plans and movements by clicking the link down below. Scope.gg. Feel the game. The second exciting event which occurred a little later is the first appearance of Source 2 version on a public app ID 730. So basically in a version of the game that we all play. Previously we've seen this version only in a closed beta for the developers under app ID 710. And most likely they are just testing how the game coordinator reacts to another version in the public branch of the game. If it connects normally, if you can join some official servers and so on and so on. In theory this may confirm the rumors that the transition to the new engine won't happen immediately. And similar to Dota 2 Reborn, two versions of the game on the first and second source will be available at the same time. Time. And since it's all tested on one public app ID of CSGO, the version selector will appear immediately after a possible port. The next big thing will happen when the developers will join the S2 map in the public branch of the game. So after that all possible doubts will go away. Also some unknown guys who have absolutely nothing to do with us did not release an anonymous bot in Telegram, through which you cannot follow the actions of the CSGO developers. The difference between this non-existent bot from our private version is the absence of the names and IDs of developers. So all of the information from it can be safely not spread in the community without potential harm to the developers. The link is not in the description. One of the Valve employees asked users on Twitter how they divide in their Steam library into categories. Along with the question he attached a screenshot example. On this screenshot there are 43 games added to the Valve subgroup, when officially in Steam there are only 33. Clearly some of the 10 top secret projects are just normal tools, like the CSGO SDK. 
but I'm sure there are a couple of interesting projects in there like Citadel or HLX. Besides it, Valve continues to regularly update and renew 32 job openings for the new hires. It ranges from psychologist, economist and sound design people to all sorts of engineers, programmers, managers and game designers. According to Valve, they are always looking for the new employees, but lately they've been doing it a lot more. This is happening because right now Valve has several games and hardware in active development, like VR helmets and new iterations of Steam Deck. Joshua Ashton, a guy who often helps Valve as a contractor and who's been a huge contributor to the development of Steam Deck and Proton, published an alternative physics engine to the first source. V-Physics Jolt or Just Volt is a replacement for the Havoc engine, which belongs to Microsoft and is used in absolutely all Valve games on the Source engine. Volt, similar to the Source 2 Rubicon, is a high-performance engine that supports interactions of thousands of objects with each other, without influencing game performance too much. And also, Volt is based on another open-source physics engine called Jolt, which has been used in games like Horizon Forbidden West. If Valve sees enough attention around this project, the community could potentially get rid of need to pay for the Havoc engine license. So the people who want to create paid games based on the source engine won't have to pay a $30,000 fee. Valve has finally started remaking the Steam mobile app. The current version is ultra outdated and most people use it to just get the Steam Guard codes. But one of the key features of the new application is logging in by scanning a QR code from verified device. And it works almost the same as in Discord. You can try it out yourself by downloading the beta from the App Store or Google Play. But keep in mind that it has a very bad performance on many devices. And some users including me had to reset Steam Guard because of some bugs with authorization. Aqua found hidden animations in the CSGO main menu. With a little manipulation using console commands, you can give additional types of items to the standing agent. By default, you can only choose weapons, but in practice you can force some equipment such as grenades, diffuse kits, Zeus and even armor. Morozov shared some progress of the development of his new map called Boulder. After two years the basic layout is ready, and at the moment the team is focused on the map visuals. They've chosen Meteora Monasteries in Greece as the basis of the setting, and to recreate a similar skybox as possible they've used data from the interactive Google Maps. I'm especially interested in covering this project because the guys used a very unusual technique or even trickery in the process of making this map. In a nutshell, complex geometry elements are made in a Half-Life Alex's version of the Hammer on Source 2. Then they've get exported all needed stuff to regular models and then get it imported into CSGO's Hammer. In the end, this process saves a lot of time and effort. And after trying it myself, I can say that the result speaks for itself. At the moment, DE Boulder weights more than 1 GB, and if it'll be officially added, it'll be one of the heaviest maps even compared to the danger. Zone. According to the development team, if they made the entire map exclusively on Source 2, it would have been ready a long time ago. Speaking of creating CSGO maps on Source 2, Ephem Bond, the creator of beloved Cash and many other officially added maps, shared his week long effort in creating a complete map from scratch on the new engine. If you look closely enough, you can see that it's inspired by his own map called Santarini. All of the complex geometry buildings and objects were created created solely within the Source 2 Hammer, without using any third-party software like Blender. According to him, new tools should create a massive wave of user-generated content, cause they greatly simplify and speed up the process of creating a complex locations, and in some cases they even allow you to do things that are nearly impossible to create within the first source. Make sure to check out my last video where I talk a little bit more about ported CSGO maps to Source 2 and don't forget to support me by subscribing, liking and writing some comments. Until next time, увидимся!